Okay guys, so uh, this is our introductory unit on um, geometry and so we are introducing the whole flip. Um, as you can see, you have the unit plan in your hands. You can see that uh, we're introducing the key points. The unit schedule takes seven days. There are five lessons and six videos. Um, so you're going to have to, you know, plan your time wisely, watch the videos at home, complete the notes, and then you'll be ready to come in and do the work. Um, you know, obviously the first day. So basically, um, the day that we'll be doing this uh, work is um, Thursday, September <clears throat> 10th. So if you watch this video prior to September 10th, you'll be you'll be good to go and set. All right, so. Um, the there there is no project for this unit as well because I want you guys to get used to how the flip works, how you have to pace yourself, how you have to do the instruction, and and so you know we didn't do a project in this section because we wanted to get used to the flip, um, but we'll get a project in the next section. That's my hope at this point. So the notes we're doing today is unit one, lesson one. And just a couple quick things, and you should know this from middle school. A point is a location in space. So, and I often put like in space. And so if I have a point, I want to go ahead and give it a label. Now that can be a number, a symbol, a sign, anything, but you know, typically I call this point A. A line is made up of points. And it has no beginning or end. And so we have a line. And if I have a line, it's made up of a lot of different points. If I name two of them, then I would then call this line AB. And the reason why we can do that is because points on the same line are called collinear. That's two L's. Collinear. We're just going to go with one. But. So if they're on the same line, they're called collinear. Now, we've talked about if we have multiple points, how that goes into making a line. If we have multiple lines, that's called a plane. So the plane is a flat surface that is made of at least uh, three non-collinear points that make three lines. All right. So we have... And also, if points are on the same plane, they're called coplanar. I thought that would make sense because it kind of goes in with the collinear. And I was right, collinear does have two L's. Collinear has two L's. Um, so we have six example problems here. And I'm going to touch briefly on uh, number uh, five. But what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video right now. And I want you to see if you can answer the six questions. And then after you unpause the video, you'll see the six answers, and we'll talk about them. Okay, so hopefully you took a couple minutes to see if you could answer these questions. And if you couldn't, that's fine. But we're going to talk about these answers real quick. And this kind of goes into a little bit of background information. For number one, it says name a line that contains points T and P. So you can see I have line PN, line PT, or line G. It's important to note that um, a line can be named with two letters. It can be named with one letter if it's a italicized letter. Um, and so also, too, I could have said NP. I could have said uh, NT. I could have said TN. Like there's any, as long as there's two letters on the line, you're good to go. So then it says name line that intersects plane S. So you could have went with line MT. Or line J. You could have went with line RQ or line H. Uh, you know, there's lots of possible answers there. 
What I want you to do is take a couple seconds, and uh, I noticed when after filling this out that this doesn't uh, have a finishing point. That's okay because actually now you might be able to answer this question better. What are two other ways to name line H? So you could go RQ. You could also go TR. There are lots of other ways that you could have named that line. As long as it's two letters on the line. So either RT, RQ, or TQ. All right. <clears throat> Question four. How many planes are shown in the figure? This is a cube. A cube is made up of how many sides? I know it's a misshapen cube, but it's made up of six sides. And so there are six planes in this figure. Now I'm sure you're saying, well, wait a minute. What about this big plane down here? This plane is part of the bigger plane. So then it comes up to the questions, are NRS and W coplanar? Well, if you notice, W is on the plane up top. So W is not in line with NR and S. And then finally, naming three collinear points. The only three points that are in a straight line are S, X, and M. Okay. This should also be a review, but a line segment, or just a segment, can be measured because it has two endpoints. Just like with our line, if we label this one AB, then this line segment can be labeled as AB or as BA. Works both ways. A ray has one endpoint. and extends in another direction in one end without end. So basically, it's part of a line. Now, of note, when we name a ray, we have to start at the endpoint. So this ray could be named EF, but it could also be named EG. Notice the key is that I started with E both times. Opposite rays are when two rays come together to make a line. And so if we split this line down the middle and we start at B, BA and BC are opposite rays. All right. At this point, I want you again to pause the video, look over the notes that we just took, and see if you can answer these three questions. Okay, so what are the names of the segments in the figure at the right? Well, there are three. There are DF, DE, and EF. I could have flipped them as well. It could have been FD, FE, and ED, and that would have been the same answer. So, again, there should only be three, but they could be flipped. What are the names of the rays? Now, there are only four because they have to start at the end point. DF. FD, ED, and EF. So now the question is, which of the rays that I've listed here are the opposite rays? So hopefully you realize I split it down the middle, and ED and EF are my opposite rays. All right. A couple more things here just to kind of cover our basis on stuff. A postulate or an axiom is basically a fancy word for a rule or an accepted statement of fact. This is what makes geometry better in some cases than other maths because there are set rules to follow in geometry. And there are three. Through any two points, there is exactly one line. So if I put A and B here, there is only one way directly from A to B. If two lines intersect, then they intersect in exactly one point. 
That's also important because if I have two lines and they intersect, they only intersect here. So if I have AB and CD, they only intersect at a new point that we can call E. If two distinct planes intersect, then they intersect in exactly one line. Or we can say one line segment. Whichever way you want to do it. So let's talk about what that looks like. Each surface at the box at the right represents part of a plane. What is the intersection of plane ABCD and plane BFHD? This is a good time to have a highlighter. This is how I handle questions like this. Plane ABCD. And then plane BFHD. BFHD. So if you look carefully, you can see that we're talking about this box and this box. So what is the edge where these two boxes meet up? Well, it's right here at BD. And so we would say that these two uh, planes intersect at line BD. Now, what I want you to do is look at these two planes and ask yourself, what two letters did they have in common? Well, this plane had a B, this plane had a B. This plane had a D, this plane had a D. So it makes sense that they intersect at plane BD, or line BD. If you can do it forwards, you can also do it backwards. So what are the names of the two planes that intersect in line AB? Well, let's go to line AB. It's AB, DC is the first plane. And then AB, FE is the second plane. And so that's our answer for question two. Okay, and notice with plane, there is no notation. It's just, you know, four letters make a plane. And so that's what you're going to do for questions like this. Okay, so let's talk about the work. In the workbook, I've assigned page 7, 1 through 14, and then uh, 21 through 29 on page 8. And then the advanced problems are page 9, 1 through 7. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, well, advanced problems. I don't feel like doing advanced problems. If you plan on taking the SATs, if you plan on getting an A in this class, or even a B, if you finish all of the regular problems, then I would suggest you do the advanced problems. 1 through 14, they follow right along with the notes. Name a segment. Name an intersection. That's a point. Collinear, two rays, opposite rays, how many lines. Uh, 9 through 14, you just have to tell me, is this always, sometimes, or never true? And we'll, we'll go over these in class together. And then when you get to the back, this is just like we just did. It wants to know the intersection of each pair of planes or lines. Now notice they give you three points. So A, B, P, what's the fourth point? Well, that's O. Okay, so when you do this, you're going to have to make sure you add information to find the crossover. Okay, um, and so then you, you're going to finish 21 through 29, which goes in line with what we just did. Then, of course, you have the advance, which is on page 9. That's 1 through 7. That wraps up the first video. I uh, hope you guys, uh, if you have any questions, I highly suggest you go back and look over, fill in the notes.
come in on Thursday with questions. Like if you didn't understand what I was talking about in a particular section, ask me. The first 10 minutes is going to be the time to do that. And then we'll uh, we'll get right to it and you guys will do the work. And hopefully if you finish early, you'll get to start the next video. So thanks for watching and definitely, like I said, come to class with questions. I'm here for you and I want to make this better for you.